Cyclone Bip or Joy's future remains uncertain. Cyclone Bipo Joy has been around Category 1 status for quite some time and that's continuing today. Currently at 15.1 degrees north, 66.8 degrees east and actually moving a little bit northeastwards at the moment towards India. Estimated wind speeds right now of 80 miles per hour, that's 130 kilometers per hour, and a pressure of 966 millibars near the center. Moving northeast at 7 miles per hour, that's 11 kilometers per hour, although we expect it will turn back towards the north and then northwestwards again later on. Nonetheless, the track forecast is shifting further east, and any of this northeastward movement will continue to add to that. So here it is right now displayed on the map, it's 15.1 uh, north, 66.8 east as mentioned with a substantial wind field but still a fairly small one, largest on the southern side as a matter of fact as of 12pm Gulf Standard Time this June 9th. It's 7.22 kilometres from Ratnagiri, 7.47 from Somnath, 7.78 from Mumbai, 10.83 from Karachi and 10.92 from Dukiam along the coast of Oman. So still quite far away from any of those land areas and it looks like the tropical storm force winds will start to reach the coast of India further towards the north and then probably affect the coast of Pakistan. That's the latest forecast but still lots of uncertainty around it. And as such our main concern right now is for flash flooding. The primary hazard as it's likely to impact a larger area than the storm's wind impacts. Wherever the storm makes landfall, along with those strong winds, we could expect rainfall totals of 500 mm with very high rain rates leading to major flash flooding issues. And even if the storm made landfall right now, uh, it's got significant cloud tops and I imagine a lot of rainfall in there that would cause a lot of flash flooding issues. So here's the forecast then over the next five to six days. A uh, storm moving initially north northeastwards there and then it does a little bit of a stalling motion around Sunday Monday and then starts to propel itself further towards the northwest. It's still pretty much conjecture though because uh, there is a lot of uncertainty about this storm, can't exemplify that enough. It could still make landfall on the coast of Oman or it could drift further towards the northeast right towards the coast of India. Right now, decent agreement over the sustained winds, around 80 miles per hour, although some of the satellite estimates are a little bit lower than that. JTWC running with 75, IMD pretty much running with 80 miles per hour as well. So, quite good agreement there with those maximum sustained winds. We do expect that the storm could strengthen quite a bit more yet, and we are expecting a Category 3 peak, I think we still are. JTWC is forecasting a uh, moderate to high Category 2 peak there at 90 knots, that's 105 miles per hour um, in around 1 to 2 days there and then gradually turning northwestwards and weakening. I am a little bit skeptical it would weaken that much uh, but we'll wait and see. Here's a GFS forecasting a Category 3 there initially, then that stalling motion, and then gradual movement northwest with another peak there, maybe even a stronger one actually, uh, so certainly got to be kept on our toes. And there it is on day 7, just about to make landfall along the coast of Pakistan, an extremely unusual location for a landfall, not many storms have done that. Uh, in the past at least on that stretch of coastline so certainly a big question mark over whether that will happen or not but there it is the projection from the GFS model. Here's the rainfall uh, what simulated radar imagery of what the storm might look like as it continues to traverse northwards there. The eye comes in fits and starts there and eventually it does manage to wrap itself around properly there in that period around the 14th 15th of June and is still quite strong by the time it makes landfall around about the 16th or 17th. So uh, certainly lots of potential for this storm to really wrap up. Uh, it depends whether this wind shear will completely relent or not. The sea surface temperatures of course are there, very warm, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, but good conditions for this storm over the next few days. And here are the rainfall projections over that period as well. Very high rainfall amounts as this storm slowly moves along 
uh, moves northwards there and as such you could see extremely high rainfall amounts thankfully over water but if that does continue towards landfall we could be looking at extremely high rainfall values it doesn't quite extend out that far the model run yet but there it is six inches along the coast where it makes landfall halfway through the event uh, that is 150 millimeters and four inches as well along some parts of the coast of India that are there as well 100 millimeters and out at sea of course 44 inches currently being indicated on that model sea surface temperatures very warm quite commonly 30 degrees Celsius and higher uh, this is actually surface temperature it's uh, not uh, the sea temperature it's the air temperature so these are a little bit lower than what the sea surface temperatures are and they are around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius quite easily probably 32 in some spots as well and that will continue as the storm moves northwards and only fall slowly as it heads towards the coast of Pakistan so a lot to digest there absolutely and here is the latest satellite imagery from the uh, Indian rapid satellite uh, I insat I should say there it is slowly moving towards the northeast slightly as we look at that visible imagery and certainly the appearance of the eye is becoming a little bit more apparent in those images today still sheer on the right hand side which you can quite clearly see uh, but the storm itself is looking okay and there may be room for this eye to really start to appear a lot more clearly throughout the course of this afternoon this evening and then of course moving onwards so there's the latest from the Force 13 website you can track the satellite imagery live on there and of course our live streaming service on the YouTube channel uh, just search youtube.com slash force 13 slash live and you can see there the convective tops still uh, really blowing up we're just waiting for that eye to pop out properly as we watch this storm closely <laughs> 